In the wake of recent developments in West Asia, the Lebanese group known as Hezbollah is playing a larger and larger role in events both within its home country as well as in nearby Palestine and beyond. Given the broad scope of activities the group has a role in, why specifically was the organization established? And what exactly are its goals? In this video, we'll discuss the origin of Hezbollah, its development, its current activities both within and beyond Lebanon, their stated future goals, and their current geopolitical standing. If you enjoy what we do, then don't forget to like the video, and check out our Patreon for exclusive content and early releases. Hezbollah, translated as the Party of God, was founded following the 1979 Iranian Revolution and the 1982 Lebanon War. As the result of the failure of formerly enthusiastic secular liberal reformers, the waning of nationalist agendas, and the disintegration of far-left movements within the region. During the 1982 Lebanon War, Israeli forces invaded southern Lebanon, and propped up a pro-Israeli Christian minority government in the south of the country. The primary impetus and supporting forces to Hezbollah were Iranian. And though originally southern Lebanon consisted of several disconnected Lebanese Shia armed groups, Hezbollah emerged as a unified resistance organization following the Israeli occupation. Since then, the group has taken part in several conflicts, including the 1985 to 2000 South Lebanon conflict against Israeli forces and their sponsored allies in the south of the country, the 2006 Lebanon war which ended in a strategic defeat for Israel, and they even made some minor contributions to the army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina during the Bosnian war. Though it was originally founded as a paramilitary organization, more recently Hezbollah has begun engaging in domestic politics, eventually participating in the Lebanese government through the March 8th alliance a coalition of nationalist, religious socialist, and pan-Arab political groups. Having secured veto power within the Lebanese parliament, Hezbollah went on to aid the passing of legislation which recognized its existence as a, quote, legitimate armed organization within the country, which has the right to liberate occupied Lebanese land, including land currently claimed and occupied by Israel. Though historically Hezbollah's main power base stems from Lebanon's Shia Muslim community, the group also enjoys some support among several Sunni and Christian groups across the country. Having a consistent pro-Syrian stance, Hezbollah would go on to join the Syrian civil war in 2012 in support of the government against forces that had destabilized Syria during the time. Since then, Hezbollah has trained militias in Syria, Iraq, Yemen, and other areas with ideologically aligned or religiously related groups, and this activity ramped up following the fight against ISIS. Following the 2018 Lebanese general elections, Hezbollah won a majority within the parliament through its coalitions, and has since used this political power to provide a dual power structure offering salaries and general services such as employment, schools, clinics, youth programs, and other social services. Today, the group uses its political influence in the country to stand parallel with, and even dominate, Lebanon's defense capabilities. In 2021, the current leader of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, claimed that the group had the ability to mobilize 100,000 fighters, as well as sophisticated artillery, amphibious, air, and ground forces. As is to be expected with non-US-aligned paramilitary groups, Hezbollah is currently considered a terrorist organization by the European Union and the United States. Despite chronically unstable economic conditions in Lebanon, particularly within rural communities, the group continues to develop and provide hospital services, news, educational facilities, economic and infrastructure development projects, and stipends to the families of Hezbollah members. Strategically, the group has a broad support base in the majority Shia regions of Lebanon, which include the south, the northeast, and southern Beirut. This allows them a critical point of engagement in the capital with their stated enemy, Israel, and a streamlined pathway in the northeast border with Syria for delivery and the movement of supplies, funding, and personnel all the way to Iran and back following Iran's consolidation of political and militia support in all countries linked to Lebanon. The group boasts a highly developed and incredibly professional intelligence service, which has allowed it to infiltrate Israeli military and intelligence targets, to secure funding, to thwart both American and Israeli attempts at assassinating members of the leadership, to prevent discovery of Lebanese weapons depots, and frequently leads to the uncovering of military operations in the region, particularly by US-sponsored agents. Having published two manifestos, one in 1985 and the other in 2009, the stated goals of the group include resistance against US-Israeli hegemony in the region, with a particular emphasis on the analysis of multipolarity and the decline of US military, political, diplomatic, and economic power around the world. 
The group clearly understands American economic interest in the region, as well as US domestic interests, which push for the continued military and imperial involvement in the West Asia and North Africa region. They pay particular attention to the power of political lobbying groups within the US government, as well as American military industrial interests, and evangelical ideological presuppositions fundamentally rooted in a deeply anti-Semitic eschatological image. Although not explicitly anti-capitalist, Hezbollah highlights what they term savage capitalism, which is, quote, embodied mainly in international monopoly networks of companies that cross nations and continents, networks of various international establishments, especially financial ones backed by superior military force which have led to contradictions and conflicts, which have turned into mechanisms of sowing dissension and destruction of identities, as well as imposing the most dangerous types of cultural, national, economic, and social theft. They also correctly analyze American adventurism in Afghanistan and Iraq as imperialist, re-emphasize the nationalist nature of the group, situate themselves firmly as anti-Zionist, represent themselves as anti-sectarian and pro-democracy, and stress their commitment to the Palestinian cause. Hezbollah has been intentionally ambiguous as to their full capabilities, though several estimates exist of their strength and availability of resources. These estimates range between 1,000 full-time fighters and up to 10,000 volunteers, all the way up to over 100,000 fighters. Between 2006 and 2020, the group increased their rocket arsenal both in short-range and long-range delivery capabilities from just a few thousand to well over 150,000 by the higher estimates. These include conventional rockets, precision munitions, drones, air defense capabilities, and anti-aircraft missile systems. The group also has large arsenals of Iranian-made short- and medium-range rockets, with the ability to reach practically all Israeli metropolitan centers as well as ships and other structures in the Mediterranean. They have sophisticated anti-tank guided missiles of both Russian and Iranian production, domestic industry for further development, and extensive technical expertise in the use of such weapons as a result of their participation in conflicts all across the region. All these factors are a major point of consideration and anxiety for both American and Israeli military analysts, as well as the political interests behind them. Along these lines, the group has shown extensive knowledge of critical infrastructure and hidden military centers within Israel, though they've yet to target them in a significant manner. Despite an entrenched presence within Lebanese society, the group does have divided segments of support broadly along sectarian lines. The latest polling seems to indicate that the group is overwhelmingly supported by the Shia of Lebanon, to a large extent rejected by the Sunni population, and more or less evenly split amongst the Christian minority within the country. These differences result mostly from the group's political allegiance to Iranian policy, particularly religious, within the region, which is generally rejected by the overwhelmingly Sunni population of the Arab world. Following the October events in Palestine, which we covered in an earlier episode, Hezbollah has operated mostly from the shadows, with occasional skirmishes and rocket fire from the south of Lebanon into the north of occupied Palestine. Pundits have been making a lot of noise about Hezbollah being an arm of Iran, but we've seen political developments within recent years which suggest the independence of the group, though they nonetheless continue to ideologically align themselves with the current Iranian government, a major ally. Regardless, the recent clashes between individual Hezbollah attack groups and the IDF have been the largest escalation between the two since the 2006 war. The back and forth has taken the form of shelling, drone strikes, rocket fire, and small-scale engagements. Israel has repeatedly attacked Lebanon with white phosphorus munitions, the use of which is internationally recognized as a war crime. They've done the same against civilian populations in Palestine. They've also targeted civilians and civilian infrastructure in Lebanon as retaliation for Hezbollah's involvement. On the 5th of November, the group shot down an Israeli drone over southern Lebanon, with Israel retaliating by targeting ambulances and civilian vehicles, killing three girls aged 10 to 14 along with their mother and injuring many others. In response, Hezbollah stated that they will begin targeting civilians for every civilian killed by Israel. This has been followed by border raids into northern Israel, the Israeli shelling of a hospital in the south of Lebanon, and the targeting of journalists reporting on Israeli attacks. Following heavy damage to an IDF base, Israel responded by bombing a church and a Lebanese MP's house. Hezbollah has repeatedly warned Israel that they are at great risk of escalating the conflict should they expel Palestinians from Gaza. So far, all Hezbollah attacks have been locally organized and incredibly small scale. Israel's fears over a new front in the north consisting of an enemy not entirely besieged and strangled by the IDF has caused them to move a significant number of their mobilized reservists and armor to the north, in anticipation of the possibility. 
Hezbollah seems to be using care not to draw the intervention of American forces within the region, particularly the new arrivals stalking the Mediterranean. Time will tell to what extent Hezbollah intends to involve itself in the struggle for Palestinian liberation. First Thought will continue to report on the situation as it develops.